Before she goes camping, Laverne has to buy a tent pole to replace the one she lost on her last outing. If the area of the front of the tent is 22 square feet, and the base of the tent has the dimensions indicated below, how tall must the pole be? And this is one of the kinds of questions on the test where you don't choose a multiple choice answer. You have to come up with the correct answer and write it in and bubble it in, once, which we'll do once we find out what the answer is. All right, so back to the question. Um, this one might not be too obvious at first what the answer is because it's not immediately clear. So what we do is find out what we already know. Let's let's take note of what we already know from the problem. Um, it says that the front of the tent is 22 square feet. So the front of the tent is 22 square feet, which is another way of saying that the area of this triangle, you can see it's in the shape of a triangle, is 22 square feet. So we know that the area is 22 square feet. What else do we know? We don't know this. That's what we're trying to find out. That's what our answer is, the distance from here to here. We do know the distance from here to here, which for a triangle is the base. So we do know that the base of a triangle is 8 feet. So this is all we know. But if we look at this, the area is 22, the base is 8. We might be reminded of the formula for an area of triangles is A area equals 1 half base time height. Just step back and see what we know and then realize that if we know these two numbers we can find out the H, the pole, how long the pole is because we can just plug them in and solve for H. So we, we know what the area is, 22 equals 1 half. Base, we know what the base is, 8. And the height, we don't know. Right, so we just keep that as an H. Now we solve for H. The first thing we want to do is get rid of this half. And the way you get rid of the half, because we want to isolate H, get H on one side of the equal sign all by itself. So the way you get rid of this half is by dividing because it's right next to this parenthesis, which means they're multiplying each other. So the way to get rid of it is to divide. So you divide by half. You divide by half on this side, you get rid of it. And then you have to divide by half on the other side to balance it out. So 22 divided by a half. Since you can use your calculator on this part of the test, you could convert 1 half in your head to 0 0.5 and divide 22 by 0 0.5 or you could think about it in a different way and think that when you divide by one half that that is the same thing as multiplying by two so to save time if you want to think about it that way you could just multiply 22 by two because dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2 just like dividing by 1 third would be the same as multiplying by 3 or dividing by 1 tenth would be the same thing as multiplying by 10 so you just you can multiply 22 in your head by 2 to save some time or you could divide 22 by 0 0.5 or 1 half on your calculator if you're not too confident with that so 22 times 2 is 44 equals 8h. Right, we bring this one down. So now all we need to do is get rid of the 8. And again, when a number is next to a variable, just right next to it, it means they're multiplying each other. So again, you have to divide by 8 to get h by itself. 44 divided by 8. So h 
equals 44 over 8, which is the same thing as saying h equals 44 divided by 8. So this is something where a calculator would come in handy. So you just plug it in there. 44 divided by 8 equals 5.5. So this pole is 5.5 feet long. And before you put that in for your answer, you could go back and plug it into this formula and make sure 22 equals 1 half of 8 times 5.5. You could do that in your calculator quickly. Right? 8 times 5.5 .5 equals 44 divided by 2 equals 22. You could do that if you have time, or you could just see if it makes sense. Does that make sense this, that this tent is 8 feet wide and 5.5 .5 feet high? Yeah, that is the height of a lot of tents. So it's a reasonable answer. So you put it in there, 5.5. .5. Now with these answer grids, it doesn't really matter where you start and end as long as you have the right answer. But I think it's best to start to the left here and you have as much room as you need. So you put in 5.5 .5 and then bubble everything in, right? You come straight down and fill in the five here. Then you do the same thing with the decimal. This uh, dot in this circle is the decimal one you got to fill that in or you will be marked as wrong and then five come straight down and fill that in and that's it